This video is sponsored by KiwiCo. More about them at the end of the video. When me and Mehdi were making the chain fountain videos, I got sent this clip quite a lot, and I can understand why. Because the behavior of the loop of string as it's pushed round by the rollers shares a lot with the behavior of a chain as it leaves the pot. I'll get to those comparisons in a minute, but my first thought was, well, I have to have one of these <laughs> because I was actually already familiar with a toy called String Thing that does a similar thing. And ever since I heard about String Thing, I wanted to get hold of one, but they don't make them anymore. So I decided to email Stephen Fazio, who made the clip, and say, can I buy it? or pay you to make one for me? And amazingly, they emailed me first saying, would you like one? I want to be clear at this point, they're not paying me at all for this video. In fact, I insisted on paying them for the prototype. So this isn't an advert, but I will leave a link in the description where you can pre-order one. It's called a zip string. Before I get into just how weirdly this loop of string behaves, it's worth mentioning I'm not the first person to show this on YouTube. In particular, I'd like you to go and watch Bruce Yeeney's video after you've finished watching this one. I'll leave a link in the description. His video is great. He built his own string shooters. Actually, his channel is great, and he did it years ago. One big difference between Bruce Yeeney's string shooters and this one is that this one is handheld, and as a result, you very quickly notice some really counterintuitive behavior. The way the loop of string moves when you move, look, it's shooting out about two meters, and as I move side to side, look, that far point of the loop moves with me. It's a bit like when you put on a virtual reality headset and the head tracking's broken, so as you move your head, the world moves with you. Maybe that's a bit of a niche reference, but it feels weird in that same way. Like, you know, I'm moving my body and two meters away, there's something moving exactly in sync with me. It's freaky. Like, obviously it makes sense. When I move my body to the left, I'm moving the string shooter as well. And the string is now coming from that new position. And because it's moving so quickly, it reaches that far distance quite quickly. And the delay is not discernible by my weak brain. So everything seems to be moving in sync. By the way, if you enjoy this sort of stuff, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. The second unusual behavior is noticed when you move side to side repeatedly, like this. You get waves traveling down the string, but you wanna get waves traveling down the bottom part of the string, not the top part. And that makes sense if you think about it in terms of imparting a wave on a string. The string is under high tension because of the dynamics of the thing. So when I impart a wave here, that wave shoots down the string at high speed. But because the string is coming towards me at high speed, the apparent speed of the wave is much slower. Specifically in this case, the wave speed is a little faster than the string speed, so it wins and we see it propagate away from the handle. On the top part of the string, the wave is shooting out at high speed and the string is shooting away at high speed, so you don't even see it. You can actually think about it in terms of the Doppler effect. Like, instead of thinking about string moving through rollers, think about the rollers moving along the string and so when the rollers impart a wave on the string that travel in the same direction as the rollers are traveling, you'll get a shorter wavelength in the same way that when an ambulance is traveling towards you, the siren sounds higher in pitch. Similarly, when the rollers impart a wave onto the string in the opposite direction to the direction that the rollers are traveling down the string, you'll get a longer wavelength. That's like how when an ambulance is traveling away from you, the siren sounds lower in pitch. In our case, the wavelength is so long on the top string, you can't even see it. You can also impart a wave in the string by tapping it. If the wave speed and the string speed were equal, then the wave wouldn't move at all. And in fact, that's what we see in the chain fountain. It falls out of the mathematics that the wave speed and the chain speed are the same. So any kink introduced to the chain seems to stay fixed in space as the chain moves through it. The fact that a chain moves through any shape it's given when in steady state is something I've talked about a lot in the chain fountain videos, but it comes from the fact that wave speed and chain speed are equal in this case. 
or at least that's one way of getting to that conclusion. By the way, for those of you who have been following the Chain Fountain dispute with me and Mehdi, it's finally over. If you haven't seen Mehdi's most recent video on the subject, the link is in the description. It's really good. I'm kind of sad that it's over, to be honest. Like, my understanding of the Chain Fountain is so much deeper because of Mehdi's videos. It's just a really great way to get to the bottom of something. I'm just gonna have to start beef with someone else, aren't I? The absolute weirdest thing for me with the string shooter is when you change direction. If I turn the string shooter through 180 degrees, the far end of the loop doesn't follow me instantaneously. Contrast that with the side to side motion I showed you earlier, where the far end of the loop does seem to follow me instantaneously. Obviously not exactly instantaneously, but as far as I can perceive it is. Whereas with changing direction of the shooter, the far end of the loop seems almost reluctant to fall into the new position. Because of the way the loop of string behaved with side to side motion, I expected that when I changed the direction of the string shooter, it would be like waving a lightsaber around. You know, the far end would just respond instantaneously, but it clearly doesn't do that. My first thought was that it was related to gyroscopes. Like, because the loop of string is spinning, then maybe it has some gyroscopic stability. But I'm not sure that's what's going on here. Like, with a gyroscope, for example, if you try to change the direction of the axis of rotation, you end up tilting the gyroscope in a direction that is perpendicular to the applied force, which is pretty weird. And I'm not really seeing that here with the loop of string. You also get a thing called gyroscopic precession when you apply a torque force to a gyroscope, and you don't see that with the string shooter either. So what's going on? Well, I think there might be a clue in trying to get a wave to propagate along the top part of the string loop. It's weird that a wave traveling along the bottom of the loop never makes it around the bend to the top part of the loop. But surely we should be able to at least start a wave here at the top by tapping the string and then have that wave move along the top string to the handle. Because we've already worked out that the wave speed is faster than the string speed. But that doesn't happen. Even weirder is that if you start a wave here, it moves away from the handle. That's in the opposite direction around the loop compared to the wave at the bottom. That seems counterintuitive, but it can be explained. Like, if we take a freeze frame and imagine plucking the string here, a wave would travel out in this direction and in this direction. This one we would never see because it's whisked away at high speed by the string. But the wave going in this direction, well, if it's traveling slower than the string, we'll see it as a wave traveling in this direction. So the behavior we see implies that the wave speed is slower on top than it is on the bottom. Which makes sense actually, because wave speed is proportional to tension, and the bottom string is being pulled by the rollers, increasing tension, but the top string is being pushed by the rollers, which decreases tension. This also explains why waves don't propagate all the way around the loop. This vertical part of string is a bit like a boundary between two media with different impedances. I've made a couple of videos about impedance mismatch, actually. I'll leave a link to those in the description. But anyway, all this means that if you were to apply a perturbation to the top part of the string and the bottom part of the string at the same time, by, for example, changing the direction of the string shooter, then those two perturbations will travel together slowly away from the handle, which is exactly what we see. What I can't explain is why we don't see waves on the top string when we move the string shooter side to side. Surely if the wave traveling towards the handle is going slower than the speed of the string, we should see it propagate away from the handle. But we just don't. If you've got any ideas, let me know in the comments. You can also discuss this video on the Steve Mould subreddit. I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. Attaching the string shooter to an electric screwdriver turned out to be a really fun modification. Like, you can't spin it too fast, otherwise it gets tangled up with itself and it ends up popping off the rollers. What I discovered though, was that you can spin the string shooter quite quickly, so long as you start off slow and bring the speed up gradually. And you end up with loads and loads of twists in the loop of string, isn't that Cool.
Thanks again to Stephen Fazio for sending me the Zipstring prototype, link in the description for pre-orders, and thanks to Professor Noel Perkins for guiding my thinking on this video. A common thing you'll hear in my household is, when's the next Kiwi Crate coming? Which is annoying because I've already explained that they come once a month and it's only been a week since the last one came. <laughs> Kiwi Crates are these projects, they come in the post, everything you need for the project is in the box. There's eight different subscription lines for every possible age group. My kids jump on them as soon as they fall through the letterbox. I'm always on the lookout for ways to spend time with my kids that's enriching. You know, we go out a lot, but as it's getting colder, we're spending more time indoors and it's an absolute godsend having these projects to do with them. You know, I can talk endlessly about the importance of STEM education, but from a purely emotional point of view, like watching my kids get excited about building something just puts a massive smile on my face. And it's not just about the build, there's always a STEM angle as well. For example, maybe you're building a paint spinning art machine, but you're also learning about how motors and switches work. Every crate comes with a magazine with additional activities and things to do, so each crate ends up lasting for days and days. You can get the first month of a KiwiCo subscription for free if you use my special URL kiwico.com forward slash Steve Mould. The link is also in the description so check out KiwiCo today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did don't forget to hit subscribe and the algorithm thinks you'll enjoy this video next. Squeeze this, the air goes through here yeah. and then then it connects to this, yeah. so it goes so hard that it pushes this off. Oh, I see. Look. Go on. Whoa!